So, you want to edit like Swagger Souls. This one's for you. All right, what's up guys? My name is Shocker GQ, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys edit like Swagger Souls. He's got some pretty simple effects we're gonna be working on today, but I think it's better to put a little bit of effort in than nothing at all. Quick disclaimer though, I cannot cover every single one of the effects he uses in every single one of his videos because we'd be here for quite some time, but I picked the ones that he uses in the majority of his videos, so hopefully you guys, Hopefully you guys find this video helpful, and if so, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Now for this video, we're going to be covering some basic text animations. We're going to be covering how he has graphics coming on and off of screen. Uh, we're going to be covering some basic zooms and also some basic motion, tra motion tracking. This is not going very well. Now first off, we're going to be covering the basic text animations, which is going to be text growing on top of itself, text jumping in, and text shaking like crazy. So let's go ahead, hop in here, and I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. So to begin, I've already got some text and uh, some Valorant footage here that we're going to be working with. So to start messing with it, all you have to do is select your text layer, then go to the effects controls in your top left corner of your screen. And for this effect, we're going to be messing with scale. So hit the stopwatch next to scale. And we already have that first keyframe for 100. Then all you have to do is move your playhead back a little bit and set another keyframe for zero. Now you can spread these keyframes apart a little bit, but basically all you have is text growing in on top of itself. Super simple. And if you want to stretch it out a little bit so it grows in a little bit slower, just spread these keyframes apart and there's nothing much else yet to do. And then here you go. Here's our nice growing in text. It's very simple. Next, we're going to be moving into our jump in text, which is basically the same text we just did with one more step. Now, it's somewhat similar. In fact, all you have to do is literally just go to the text we just made, put your playhead in between the two keyframes we just made, roughly about three fourths of the way through, and then go ahead and set another keyframe for 110. And that's it. Now, here you go. Here's our nice jump in text. Pretty simple to do. Next, we're going to moving on to this like shaking text but i'm gonna make it a lot simpler on you guys so to do this shake effect come to the effects on the top right hand corner of your screen and look up an effect called transform then drag that on top of the text that you're gonna be messing with go to the effects controls on the top left scroll down a little bit now what you're gonna have is seven total keyframes basically i have the keyframe that you're gonna be messing with a colon the x value a comma and then the y value so like i said you don't have to sit here and listen to me name all of these out all you have to do is make seven keyframes give them all those values and there you go you're gonna have your shake effect now after you've added all these keyframes in what you're gonna want to do is go ahead grab your first keyframe and put it to the very beginning of your effect then you're gonna use the arrow keys on your keyboard basically you're gonna want to move to the right one frame grab the next keyframe and drag it on top of that and it should auto lock on move to the right again with your arrow key and then do the same thing again and basically do this for every single one of your keyframes now essentially what this is going to do is make it to where your shake's going on a lot quicker so it's not really slow and not really the effect we're looking for but what this will do is kind of shorten down the amount of your effect is going on and to make this shake effect last longer all you have to do is hold left click and select all these keyframes hold down your alt key left click and then drag over the copies of the keyframe you just made and you continue to do this basically as long as you want this shake effect to go on and you can basically have this as long as you want but after that you're going to want to scroll down a little bit you're going to want to uncheck this box that says use composition shutter angle and then you're going to want to change your shutter angle to value to 70. And what this will do is give it some motion blur so while all that shake is going on it gives it more of an in-depth shake effect all right, then here you go. Here's that shake effect we just made. Pretty simple to do, just a little bit of keyframe work. The next effect we're gonna be covering is when Swagger has a graphic coming on and off the screen. Pretty simple to do, so let's hop into it. This time we're gonna be editing Sweet Baby Arnold. So to begin, you go to the effects on the top right-hand corner of your screen and look for an effect called Transform. Then you drag and drop it on top of the graphic that you wanna be messing with. Then you go to the effects controls on the top left, scroll down a little bit, and we're gonna be messing with position for this. So go ahead and hit that stopwatch next to position. Now let's say this is a position where you basically wanna have the graphic stop on screen. So all you have to do is move this playhead forward at the beginning, left click on this Y value, and then drag your mouse to the right until you can see that your graphic is off the screen. Then we're gonna scroll down a little bit, uncheck this use composition shutter angle, and we're gonna change it to 180. Now we have Arnold popping on the screen kind of slowly, so if you want to have it that slow, that's fine. But if you want to have it a bit quicker, all you have to do is move these keyframes together a bit more, and then it'll pop on a lot quicker. Now that's how you get him off the screen, but to get him off the screen, it's pretty simple. You just mimic what you just did. So we can add another keyframe here, and then we can literally just copy this first keyframe we made. We can literally just hold our Alt key, left click on that first keyframe we made, and then drag it over to the end. Then here you go, you have your graphic popping on the screen pretty quickly, staying for a little bit and then leaving just as quick as it came. Next effect, we're gonna be moving into when Swagger kind of zooms in on something that he wants his audience to specifically pay attention to. So to begin, you go to the project files on the bottom left hand corner of your screen, you right click, go to new item, and then add an adjustment layer in. Go ahead and make that 60 frames per second, hit okay and then drag that adjustment layer on top of the clip that you're wanting to zoom in on. Next, we go back to effects on the top right hand corner of your screen, look for our best buddy transform. If I could one day spell transform right, that would be amazing. Then you take transform, drag on top of that adjustment layer, go to the effects controls in the top left hand corner of your screen, scroll down a little bit and we're gonna be messing with position and scale. 
Now let's say in our circumstance that we want to zoom in on that mini map. So we've already got our keyframes here at the very beginning. Then we move our playhead forward a little bit. And let's say we're going to go ahead and zoom into about 300. Then all you're going to do is grab this X and Y value and basically change them until you can see the edge of the screen here. Then you're going to do the same thing with your Y value. And then there you go. You're zoomed in on the mini map and it zoomed in a little too tight. So we're going to zoom out just a hair just to see it. Then we just adjust our X and our Y values one more time. And there you go. You can see the whole mini map. Then here you go, here's our easy little zoom. Next, we're gonna be moving into our final effect with this is some basic motion tracking. Now you can do this in After Effects, but in my opinion, it's like if you're gonna take your clip, move it into After Effects, do all the motion tracking, render it out, then move it back in Premiere, or you can stay in Premiere, do some motion tracking by hand where it's a little bit more effort, but you end up usually saving yourself a lot of time in the long run, or at least that's usually the case for myself. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it in Premiere so you're not having to jump back and forth between different programs. So to do this, you go to back to your project files on the bottom left, grab the adjustment layer we made, then go back to the effects on the top right and look for our friend transform. Drag that on top of that adjustment layer. Now in our case, we're gonna be focusing on this jet the whole time. So we're gonna move our playhead to the very beginning of our adjustment layer, scroll down a bit, and we're gonna be editing the position. And we're also gonna have scale in at about roughly 200. Let's see, yeah, 200 is good. Basically however much you want zoomed in. But basically what we're gonna do is grab these X and Y values and set it to where jet is in the middle of the screen for that keyframe. So here you go. Now we're gonna move forward a little bit. So then she, you can see now that she's kind of like, she's not as centered as she was a minute ago. So just go ahead, recenter a little bit, then move forward again, recenter again. Now, whenever you're doing this by hand, you're gonna have to go back through between these keyframes and kind of clean it up a little bit because you can see here, as I'm moving between these two keyframes, Jet's not really in the middle as much. So all you have to do is kind of just pick a spot where you can see she's not really in center, go back again and just readjust where she's at. And essentially you just keep going through here and kind of looking to where your Jet's not really in center. And all you have to do is just tweak it just a little bit, not too much. And you don't have to be super precise with these keyframes, but just enough to where she's typically in the middle of the screen throughout the entire tracking. Now, if you want to be more precise with this, you can go in frame by frame and really just adjust jet to where she's in the middle. But if that's still not enough for you, like I said, you can go into After Effects and do it like that. But like I said, it's a lot of extra time for not a lot of extra like output. So eh, do what you want to do. But this is what I do. But here you go. Here's that super simple motion tracking we just did and the final effect that we're going to be covering for this video. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if there's somebody else or something else you want me to cover in a future video. And until next time, peace. And also, we're going to be covering some zooms whenever we need to talk about things, maybe slowly or very fast, whatever you want to do. Oh, one more thing though before.